Get out in the room, come up to the front, do whatever makes you feel uh, comfortable uh, and whatever makes you feel like you can worship the Lord well. But what I would ask and encourage you all to do is that when when we're worshiping, to focus our full attention on the Lord. Um, and that's like, that's it feels like a, a tall ask because there's so many things distracting us. But as an analogy, if someone who is a famous celebrity walked through the doors right now, all of our focus and all our attention in the room would go off the person with the microphone and it would go straight to the celebrity that's in the corner. So that's an analogy that our culture uses our attention and like turning our attention to somebody as a way that we honor them and we show that, man, the most important person walked in the room. So let's do that for the Lord. Let's man, say, all right, Lord, I know that you're here and I wanna focus my full attention on you, if, if nothing else, but just to bring you honor, saying you're the most important person in the room. Can we do that today? Yeah. Cool, Jesus, thank you so much that we get to come into your presence and we get to focus our full attention on you. There's so much that is competing for our, our attention and our focus. We choose to lay all that aside and say we wanna focus our full attention on you and praise your name, amen.
Hey guys, what's going on? Show me a mountain again. One thing that's too hard. Come on. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can't part. Cause he's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. It's possible. Give him a shout of praise, yo. He's so good and he's so worthy of our praise. Yeah. Victory. 
and you see
Sing that one more time. Death could not. See, death could not hold you. Yes, you are the reason. Yes, you are. And you see it in majesty. You are the reason. He. Jesus, you really are all these things. God, I pray you would give us new revelations of who you are. That the people that, that see you in heaven, 
face to face that the day and night are worshiping you because of revelations of who you are. So Father, in this lifetime, on this earth, would you give us new revelations of you so that we can be joining in heaven and singing these songs of praise to you because you're worthy. So Father, thank you for this worship time that we get to just, just lay it all down and, and fix our gaze on you, fix our attention on you and sing songs that are true and sing songs of praise to you. So Father, I pray that you would give us new and deeper revelations. And God, as we move on to the next part of the service when we're actually going to be hearing from your word, I pray that the even deeper revelations would come from that and that that would spur us on to worship even and again. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Thanks so much, worship team. Let's give them a hand. So good. Well, like I said at the beginning of the night, welcome to YM Orlando Community Night. I'm so glad that you all are all here, whether you're in person or online. So thankful you're here. Uh, I wanted to take a moment and just introduce, or um, take a moment and highlight the newcomers in the room. So if it's your first time ever at YM Orlando, this is your first community night ever. Could you raise your hand? And we want to actually, uh, we'll be passing. Keep your hands up. Uh, yeah, welcome here. So keep your hands up and we're going to be passing around a sheet of paper. It's a contact card. If you fill it out and turn it back in to the table in the back, uh, we'll actually get, we have a gift for you. So keep your hands up and they're going to be walking around to be able to give you a card. So thanks so much for joining us today. All right, well here, we are all about the nations. Oh, for real life, you guys, work, uh, you guys don't need to raise your hands. You guys are good. We, we know that you're here. Don't worry. <laughs> So we are all about the nations. And one thing I wanted to share with you guys is that it's a true fact, but it's sobering that there really are 2.2 billion people that are alive today that will live and die without ever hearing about Jesus unless someone goes and tells them. Wyoming Orlando is a missions movement that uses training and outreach to, to get you to go to the nations and share the gospel until every person has heard the gospel, has a Bible in their heart language, and has an opportunity to be discipled. Guys, we're all about that. That's like our heartbeat and why we're doing what we're doing. But the exciting thing is that we actually have students in the nations right now doing that very thing. And they're all over the world. They're split up into teams. It's on this side of the room. They're split up into teams going to all these different nations. But we have one specific team that we're highlighting today, and it's our School of Ministry Development team or SOMD team that's in the Middle East. And we have a video from them, and then we're going to actually pray for them. So we've got the video queued. And turn your attention to the screen and watch the update video. Hey, guys. What's going on? We're here in the Middle East, and we've been here for about two weeks now. It's been incredible. God's been really moving in this place, and we've been able to make super cool friendships and relationships. And we're currently just working on, you know, getting out and learning about the culture and just meeting new people, seeing what they have to offer, and just hopefully telling them about Jesus at the end of the day. Uh, right now, we're out here on this Monday night getting ready to do some women ministry, and I'm going to pass it to my friend Maris here, and she'll describe more. Yeah, so we had the opportunity tonight to come out and meet women here who are working in coffee shops that are actually like a front for human trafficking. So we just got the chance to come out, meet them. We're handing out little gift bags to them and basically just saying like that Jesus loves them and praying for them and trying to build those friendships. So yeah, you can see in the back, our team is making bags to hand out right now. Yeah. Yeah, so a couple prayer points our team would love is just praying that God will open the hearts of people to receive the gospel and hopefully give their life to Jesus. But also just like protection over the ladies right now on Monday nights. We're going to be doing this pretty consistently. So just praying that their hearts and souls will be guarded and we'll be able to see some awesome stuff God has. Yeah, and also ultimately the goal of this is to get these women into a safer place. So just be praying that we can do that for them and that's a good relationship to be part of. Yeah, guys, and here's a quick little look at the place we're at. Quick peek at the Middle East. All right. Say bye, everyone. That's so awesome. Yeah, give it up for the team. We're so proud of these guys. We just sent them out a few weeks ago. They're coming back a few weeks from now. We're stoked about hearing the stories that they have to share with us. But let's take 30 seconds. They, they gave us three prayer points. So let's take 30 seconds and turn to the neighbor next to you and just pray for 30 seconds for this team as they're doing ministry. All right, go for it.
Jesus, I pray you would soften the hearts of the people in the Middle East that this team would have boldness to share the gospel and strategies on how to do it in a way that won't bring any harm, that would keep the ladies safe. And God, I pray for your safety and your protection over the whole team as the, in their whole trip. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks so much, guys. We love the nations and we love the teams that are out there. So thanks so much for praying with us. All right, so tonight we have an amazing speaker. But before I, we invite the speaker up, I invite Jesse Anderson to introduce the speaker. Give him up. All right, thanks, Josh. Good evening, guys. So as you guys have heard from Josh, we're a training campus. And the cool part about sending and equipping students to the nations is we get high-quality teachers that come in our programs. And we get to kind of get more out of them than just the weekly teaching. We get the privilege of asking them, hey, not only would you share in our schools, would you bring a fresh word for the entire community, both in Orlando and in the Claremont area? And so speaking in our biblical teaching and preaching school is Charlotte. Don't acknowledge her yet. Don't worry, it's coming. All right. Let me, just let me tell you a little bit about this little ray of sunshine over here on your right side. Charlotte has been with YWAM for over 15 years. She specifically has a, she feels a calling to see biblical knowledge come fluently and easily to quench and to remove Bible poverty, both in education and in distribution. Not only in education, but also in teaching. So much so that she is at the moment working and leading and teaching in our biblical and teaching school, which is running for the first time ever here. Big deal. <clears throat> Not only that, but Charlotte also is in the process of making that accessible to our online community. So we run a lot of schools online as well, and we're looking at this one also becoming online under the stewardship of Charlotte. I also have had the privilege to get to know this woman for about the past year and a half, because we are both students in uh, our master's degree program with Youth with a Mission. And you know, you have those students that you do schoolwork with, and that you want to sit next to because you know she's not going to mess around, right? This is Charlotte, right? I come in, I'm bebopping, I'm talking, I look over, and this, this woman is ready to get stuff done. So I position myself next to Charlotte, and I'm like, Charlotte, what are you up to? What are you hearing? What are you seeing? Charlotte is a student that I always want to find myself positioned around. Charlotte is a student as well as a teacher and as well as a deep, deep lover of the person of Jesus. So would you now stand up and give Charlotte or Orlando welcome. Welcome, Charlotte Bowden! <laughs> Charlotte, before I pray for you, I was asking the Lord for a fresh word, and uh, he led me to Proverbs 31. True story. And I feel like the Lord is speaking this over both you and your message tonight. Proverbs 31. Uh, verses 25 and 26. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is ever on her tongue. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for Charlotte. We ask that you would bring a fresh word to us. Even as we prayed for her earlier, we ask that she would be a student to her own teaching, that she would feel your power as it flows from you through her to us. And we as the body of believers position ourselves to say yes to you, God. We love you. We honor you. And we thank you so much for entrusting this time with Charlotte. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, thank you, Jesse. <laughs> I love the fact that you stand up when the speaker comes up. Because for me, when you first did it, it was like you were honoring Michael. But then you did it again when Tim came and Phil came. And I realized it was a thing you do. And it touched my heart because what I felt was actually you're honoring God. What you're doing is you're standing up with me who is standing up. And you are saying, we honor you, Father, Jesus, Spirit. And we want to hear the word you have for us. And so I love that. And, and Jesse is right. I'm bringing a word. It is only the one word. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> and the word is thankfulness. So I'm going to talk to you about thankfulness. But I'm going to tell you about my journey as I came here. It's been quite a long journey coming to start the BTPS because of COVID and various other related issues. But eventually I got here and I got my ticket 
And I went to the airport. Phil, who was teaching here uh, last week and the week before and shared the message, uh, he gave me a lift to the airport, which was wonderful because he had to leave at 3 in the morning for the 6 a.m. flight. So he got me a lift there, and I went to the airport ready to check in, and the airline said, we don't have any record of your ticket. So I, I stood there for 40 minutes, and I was so thankful because I had the peace and the patience of God with me. And I just thought, there isn't anything I can do. I might not make it, but I've done everything I can to make it. After 40 minutes on the phone, eventually she said, I'm going to issue you another ticket. So she did that, and she gave me my boarding pass. But it was only to Atlanta. So I said, what happens at Atlanta? And she says, it will be fine. You just go straight through. I was really thankful because there was a, a couple who were also on the same flight from the UK to Amsterdam. And we chuckled together and laughed. And they'd had an issue, nearly didn't make the flight because of hummus, that uh, chickpea sauce that they had tried to smuggle through onto the plane. And it was uh, a liquid, so they'd been taken aside and all their luggage had gone through because liquids weren't allowed, over 100 mil. And then when I got from Amsterdam to Atlanta, all I wanted to do was pray. And it's a nine hour flight. And all I wanted to do was just pray and pray, and scriptures came to mind, and I prayed them through. And then um, this guy on the, to the side of me, he put his earphones in, and he put his music on loud, and he started singing at the top of his voice, as some people do, very out of tune. And normally it would drive me nuts. But it didn't. One and a half hours he went, and I was surprised that actually no one said anything. And I just sat there silently praying, and then he eventually stopped. And then I got off the plane at Atlanta, and I went to the check-in desk. I had no boarding pass. I'd somehow managed to get there without a boarding pass. And I said, I'm on this flight. And they said, we don't have any record of you. And so then I said, so what happens now? Because I don't know anyone in Atlanta. And, and they said, you go to the Delta desk. So I went to the Delta desk. And meanwhile, Marnie had been communicating with me. And that was such peace to my heart. I was so thankful that there was someone in Orlando who knew I was in um, Atlanta. And Delta were great, and they saw the issue. KLM in, in Amsterdam hadn't put my ticket through. They did it all and gave me a boarding pass. But that was so good, and I was so thankful. And then I got on the plane, and I sneezed. And the lady next door to me said, bless you. And I said, amen. <laughs> <laughs> and then Marley picked me up from the airport. And when I went to pick up my suitcase, which I wasn't sure if it would be arriving with me, he was there. And it turned out that my suitcase had actually come on the flight before. So it had got there before me. And so while everyone was waiting for their suitcases, we just went, which is such a, such a grace. And I was so thankful. And then my final thankfulness was when I arrived into hospitality, and I saw the room, and I saw the bathroom, and the kitchenette, and all the gifts, the flowers, the chocolates, and that was such a blessing. And I just, when Marnie had gone and I sat there, I just felt embarrassed, because I just thought, this is overwhelming. And then I thought, God, don't let me ever get used to this. Don't let me ever feel that this is what I should receive. 
I am so thankful, but I really want to be thankful for everything and take this as a gift. And so I'm just going to now read some scriptures. Romans, Paul, he says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. And in 1 Corinthians, he says, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. And in Ephesians, he says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, but remembering you in my prayers. In Philippians, he says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. You see this overflowing of thankfulness in Paul's heart. And he's in prison when he's writing some of these letters. In Philemon, he says, I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers. And in 1 Thessalonians, we give thanks to God always. And in 2 Thessalonians, we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers. Maybe some of them weren't giving thanks, and he says we ought to. And then in 1 Timothy, I thank him who has given me strength. Thanking God, he gives us the strength. He gives us courage. He gives us everything. And in 2 Timothy, I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors. And it's thought that this letter was shortly before he was going to die, be beheaded. And he's still thanking God. And it was out of the overflow of his heart that he thanked God in hardships, in joy, in fellowship. He always thanked God. He thanked God in every circumstance. And then we go back to David, King David. And he was a man who God said, was a man after his heart. He loved God, he knew God, and he always thanked God. In 1 Chronicles, David's song of thanks, he says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. He knew he was loved. He knew God. And out of this great love within his heart, he was always thankful. You'll remember that, that uh, passage where he was so thankful that he ran through the streets half naked and his wife wasn't very pleased. That was just this over sense, over filling of joy and love and thankfulness to God. And he wanted to build uh, a tabernacle, but God said, no, you're not to build it but your son Solomon will build it. But even though Solomon built it, he did have uh, a a play in how it was ordered and the Levites. And it says in 1 Chronicles, they were to stand every morning thanking and praising the Lord and likewise at evening. And so that's what the Levites did. They praised the Lord and they thanked the Lord. In Coloss- I was going to read from my Bible, but it's quite awkward when you're actually holding a mic as well, so I think I'll stick to reading from here. Colossians 3, 15 to 17. It says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Do you notice that repetition of thanks, of thankfulness? When we know Christ is in our heart, thankfulness overflows. And we are united with the Father and the Son 
and the Spirit. We are united with his love and his peace and his joy, and we are in that loving relationship. And so how could we not overflow with thanks for him as he overflows with thanks because he made us and loves us? It's this constant receiving and giving and receiving and giving of thankfulness that we have. Ephesians says, Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking where it's out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. When our focus is on ourselves, on our selfish desires, or on things of our culture, we might not overflow with thanksgiving. And Paul wants them to have their focus on Christ and overflow with thanksgiving. And in 1 Thessalonians, he says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Our thankfulness comes out of our knowing Christ, out of our being with Christ. I went for a walk shortly after I arrived here. And this is grass, which I found. I'm a gardener, so I do enjoy living things. And grass is one of them. And I noticed how soft this grass is to the touch. And also, it's, it's kind of blue, and it's kind of purple, and it's kind of red as well. There's brown bits, there's purpley bits, and there's seed heads on it as well. So when, I, uh, when it blows in the wind, the seed heads blow as well. And I saw that, and I was just really thankful. It was something new. It was something I hadn't seen before, and it just brought me joy. And there are, there are many things that you will be thankful for, things that God places in your way, things that you are made in a certain way to be grateful and thankful for things. I saw in the distance a slow-moving object, and so I ran towards it because I thought, it might be an armadillo. I've heard there's armadillos in this region. But it wasn't an armadillo, but it was a one-foot tortoise. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. So I went up to him, and I greeted him, which is what I do with animals. And I said hello, and I was so delighted and thankful that I discovered this one-foot tortoise. And thankfully, it wasn't the kind that jump up and bite, because apparently I hear that there are some in Florida that can jump two feet in the air and bite your finger off. This is what Marnie told me. <laughs> but he was very friendly. But when we're bound up in God's delight and thanksgiving, we include ourselves in his uh, relationship of joy and thanksgiving and love and peace with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as the way that they communicate with one another, and we're all bound up in that. And we're so relational. And that is because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are relational. They are a relational God, and we are made in their image. I live alone. I generally have to book my flights alone, do things alone, just because of the way life is. But I was so thankful to Jesse, because someone from the Masters had suggested that there's a good flight going to South Africa from Newark, because we have to go uh, and do an intensive for two weeks in South Africa. So I looked up the flights, and I found a good one to leave and a good one to come back. And Jesse said, let's go together. And I thought, great. And so I had these flights, and then I went over to him, to his office, and he tapped away on the computer. And he's a member of United, or he has some high-flying status within United, so he thought he might get good deals and good tickets and bumped up with, with the seats. I don't know if that's happened yet. 
But it was such a joy doing it with him, not just doing it by myself, but that relationship. And then I asked him, what about uh, COVID and, and these things we have to do? And he said, we ask Vanya. I think that's right. <laughs> and that was such a joy that everyone has their different gifts and then they relate to one another and we just combine and I was so thankful. There are times when life doesn't go as expected and there can be dark times when we might not feel that we can be thankful. Matthew says in chapter 6, verse 25 to 26, he says, it's just about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you put on. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? I thought of this as I was again standing in the field in nature, looking up at the buzzards, and one was flying so low over, and I could see the underneath of his belly and the markings. And it was so beautiful, and I just thought that's so amazing, the way that bird's created. And then as I, I went further, there's these little birds and I tried to look them up. I wasn't sure what breed they were, but they've got yellow bellies. And they were pecking in the trees at insects. And this scripture came to mind as I reflected on those birds and how it moved my mind from what I was thinking to thinking of creation and then thinking of God. So we can be anxious at times, but when we focus on God, and really listen to God. It can move our minds to just think on him and experience him. I'm so thankful for the air we breathe, the insects. I love seeing the beetles as they hurtle along with loads bigger than their own bodies, the ants that crawl in and out the birds, the flowers, the bees which suck the nectar. I brought my binoculars in case I might see an alligator. I, uh, <laughs> someone said they run fast, but I don't know. <laughs> Everything that God gives to us is a gift. And we can either see that or we don't see that. And I so want to see that. All of what creation is that is good is given to us by God our Father as a gift. And he made us in his image, and we too are a gift to one another. Our skills, what we do, we each have a unique personality and a unique skill, and it gifts others. It gifts what we do for Christ, but it also gifts one another as we work and live in relationship. And we show our love to God through our thankfulness and through our giving of these gifts to honor God and one another in the way we serve. And it might be something like cleaning loos or cleaning toilets which is the American word, I think, or restrooms, or hoovering, vacuuming. I must get my USA terminology right. Or gardening, which is what I do. Or it might be sharing a message, or teaching on a school, or going out to the Middle East and being with the women there or it could be so many different things, but we all have our certain giftings and we can do those with joy and delight and we need to find those giftings within us. 
and in thanks, thankfulness to God, thanking him for where we see our giftedness. He can enhance that. And it's a different mindset to when we're thinking, I ought to do this, or I don't really want to do this, but I will do this, or I'm reluctant. There's this joy in thinking, Christ, I serve you, and I do this for you. And I know that even if I'm doing something that might not fill me with the greatest joy, it will, because you're watching me, and you will fill me with the greatest joy and lead me into what is the greatest joy for me. In Philippians, it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. There will be times when we do not have thankfulness in our heart, when we do not th feel thankful, when we are saddened, when we are depressed, when we are down, when someone's upset us. And we need to be honest with that. We can thank God. We can always find something to thank God, even if it's the smallest thing. But we need to be honest with God about those things which are concerning us, those things that do affect us. We don't want to just pretend that we're overflowing with thanksgiving and love when actually deep inside us there are issues that are upsetting us. I have a mental illness called bipolar disorder. You might have heard of it. And before I took medication, I went through years and years of very severe depression. Uh, there were reasons I didn't want to take medication, which I won't go into but it did mean that I spiral down in the deepest of depression where I could not see that there was a God that was good and I couldn't experience a good God. The only scriptures I could read were Psalms because I could relate to the Psalmists when they wrote about being in the deepest pit, I was there. And then at the end of these psalms, they always came back to praise and thankfulness. If you read any lament, they will say their struggles, they will pour out their struggles to God, and they will pour out the fact that their enemy is battling against them, or whatever the situation is, but they will come back to God and they will say, praise you and I thank you. And I was able to do that in the deepest, darkest moments, always come back to thankfulness to God. The spiritual forces of evil will always try and steer us away from being thankful, from knowing who God is and being with him. And we need to be aware of this. And thankfulness brings us into the presence of Christ, whatever we're going through. There's also actors and actresses and celebrities and a whole variety of people who can end up being idols. And this is very, very real in young people's lives. And they may well be overwhelmingly gifted, and we may well love everything about them. But I suggest rather than fall into lust or idolatry, that we just thank God that they give us great music. Thank God that we love them in the films, they're great actors or actresses. Thank God for them and pray for them. And that will bring us out, out of falling into these kind of idolatrous situations, which I see so much in the media. And probably not you, but the people who you're talking to 
might be in this situation. And just think of them as a gift. They are a gift in what they do. And they are a gift to us because we can celebrate with them that they are wonderful musicians or wonder make wonderful films. I want to just take some, some time, uh, just a minute of silence, because this is my passion, to, um, that you might just reflect on this day and just think about what you are thankful for in your hearts to God. So we're just going to take one minute of silence. And I just want you to look to God and think in your hearts and in your mind, just say what you're thankful to him for. And now I just want you to reflect over this day and ask the Holy Spirit to bring to mind, ask God to bring to mind something that you might not be necessarily thankful for, something that's drawn you away from God's presence. It might be a sadness. It might be just something that someone said, but just something where you haven't felt the presence of God, something that, that is just, it might be something that you did that you didn't want to do, just something that drew you away from God's presence. And in a minute, just bring that to God's mind as well. So what you've just done is an age-old practice, and it's called the examen. You may well know it. And it's just something that you can do at the end of the day. Just very simply, it takes a couple of minutes. You can lie in bed or with your roommates or whatever and just recall, what am I thankful to God for? And then, what thing today might have saddened me, might have brought me away from God. And there's no judgment, it's just bringing it before God. And he may well not change the situation, but through this exercise, he will change you. And this is what I did daily to bring me back to YWAM after I'd left YWAM for 10 years. And doing this and seeing the life that YWAM brought me it actually brought me back into the presence of God being within the YWAM community. So I'm th so thankful to this exercise. 
So we thank you, Lord, that you listen to us. And I thank the Lord for this loving, beautiful, wonderful community who is a gift to one another. And they glorify you, Lord, in all of who they are because they are made in your image and they reflect your beauty. And I just want to read a scripture and end with the scripture from the book of Revelation. Amen, says everyone, the whole multitude of the nation and tribe and people who are surrounded before the throne of the Lamb. They say, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to the God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Charlotte. That was amazing. Wow. Thank you so much for that word. It was so encouraging. And just, I, I'm sure many of us in the room, <clears throat> many of us in the room probably have heard something about thankfulness before. But it's just such a good reminder because the reality is that it's easy to fall out of the practice of thankfulness. It's easy to forget and just be like, oh, man, uh, it's been a month since I've really been truly thankful to the Lord. Oh, my goodness. But the cool thing is that what she just showed us is a prayer of examine. That's a practice that we can do continually. And it's not something that we have to work our way back into this practice. We just start today. We just did it tonight. So I really highly I mean, she already said it, but I really highly recommend just using this as a part of your walk with the Lord, being thankful. Thank you so much for coming to Community Night tonight. I'm so glad you came. And we have snack to your right. So please come next week at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night. All right, see you there.